because we've only got an hour sure. as a group at the moment uh, in, in this particular seminar, um, to, to James. Uh, now, where has James gone? Uh, he's... He's here. I'm here, Peter. He's going to, again, uh, he, I saw he had a, a series of packages over there that he was going to unpack, I think, um, and uh, just give us a demonstration of some of the wizardry that he can do. All right. Um, so, quick survey. Could you type into chat um, yes if you were here last week and no if you weren't here last week? All right. We have a mix. So, very briefly, um, a couple of people commented earlier, folks I think who were, had played games in the past, that, that the navigation in Second Life is kind of clunky and that the graphics really don't look as good as, as my, the current sort of state-of-the-art games. Both of those things are very true. Um, if you were to go to the store and buy a game for your Xbox or your PlayStation, um, it would look glorious, movement would be smooth, um, and it would seem to be a much more compelling environment. Uh, so why do we do things here in Second Life? Um, the, the reason that we do things here is that um, in the games space, all of the things that you see are, are very, very carefully tuned um, to provide just a single experience. So if you're playing um, a, uh, let's see, Call of Duty I think just came out. If you're playing some war simulation game, everything will be finely tuned to be uh, carrying an M16 rifle and walking over a desert and the, you know, scrub brushes will look, scrub brush trees will look will look beautiful. But you will never see anything other than that scenario. You'll only see the things that the, the designers of the game or the designers of the environment um, anticipated. What makes Second Life different um, is that anyone who participates in the system can change it. Um, and not just by, you know, talking or chatting or making farting noises. Um, you can actually fundamentally create new new objects, new behaviors in the world. So, for example, I can um, Let's see, I can click on the ground in front of me, maybe, if I can find an empty spot. I'm going to walk behind you guys. Hang on. Alright. So, I did a little bit of building last time, um, but this box that you see in front of you is, is the basic sort of brick um, out of which everything in Second Life is constructed. Anybody in the system can create these Lego bricks as often as they want. Uh, they're free unless you want to have land to store them on permanently, in which case that costs money. That's how the company makes its, uh, makes its money. Um, but you can see as I'm creating these objects here, uh, they don't look all that interesting, but they, they're as real as anything that might have been prepackaged in the world. I, I can't walk through them. If I fly over them, I can go and stand on top of them. Um, I can apply little computer programs to them, little scripts um, that do new things. Other people can sit on them. If I click on it, it says the word touched. Um, and so what this means is that just like the web did for uh, the written word in that you know anybody who could get over the hurdle of creating a website could now write and publish to an audience of basically the entire world. Um, Second Life kind of does for, for 3D content. Um, again, the learning curve for, for navigating is quite um, quite difficult. Learning to use the system is quite difficult. Uh, learning to create things in the system is also quite difficult. Um, but it does give you sort of a, a distribution platform. Um, and when you get hundreds of thousands of people into an environment like this, you find that of the hundreds of thousands, thousands of them are quite amazing creative people, um, and you get this entire ecosystem of stuff, um, these these objects, these scripts um, of the sort that you're you're seeing as we we tour around here, um, and also uh, in an economy where you can you can find these objects and, and many of them are for sale. So hang on, I'll pause there for a second. Um, questions.
All right, I'll continue then. So, as I mentioned, um, there's an economy So, um, using the Second Life economy for health-related projects, indirectly. Um, so, the virtual hallucinations environment that, that Peter talks about, um, when I was working on that, um, I'm more of a programmer than an artist. Um, I don't really have a very good ability to draw pictures, you know, uh, build three-dimensional things. Um, so. When I went looking for content to write, um, we bought chairs, exactly. So, you know, I had a credit card and I wasn't very good at sculpting three-dimensional chairs and there are other people who have a little more time on their hand and hands and are pretty good at sculpting three-dimensional chairs but need money. Um, and so there's an economy in Second Life where I can convert US dollars into uh, Linden dollars, which is the currency of Second Life. Um, I can use those Linden dollars to buy chairs and the maker of the chairs can cash out uh, the money for for U.S. dollars again. So Second Life functions like its own little uh, island nation in that regard. It's got a a funny little currency, but it trades with the U.S. dollar um, as well as with other currencies, and that that enables the economy to sort of float all boats to help everybody. Um, and so basically, pretty much anything that you're you're interested in in building, um, you can find for sale. Um, there's a uh, a marketplace at uh, marketplace.secondlife.com uh, that will show you tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of content that's for sale. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that the conversion rate between Linden dollars and US dollars is about 200 to 1. Um, so you'll see many objects for sale there that cost on the order of a dollar. Um, so much less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. So I'm going to pull out some, some medically related objects I found there. Um, this is my favorite from from last time, my my pocket MRI machine. So you may not be able to get too close to this object. It's on kind of a funny pedestal. Let me see if I can drop it down a little bit here for us. Do, 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 do. And... this guy down. So this is an object that I bought quite some time ago um, that actually is an, an educational medical device. Um, if you sit your avatar down on it, um, it will put you into this lying down position, take you inside of the scanner, and then tell you a little bit via um, audio and text about magnetic, uh, magnetic resonance imaging. Um, so one could imagine doing this sort of thing for um, other sorts of medical devices, you know, show me what it looks like to get an ultrasound or show me what it looks like to go through this particular model of a, a CT scanner. Um, The nice thing about these is that they're much cheaper than, uh, than <laughs> real-life MRI machines. The last thing I was going to show is with this wheelchair object over here. So if you look at this, um, this wheelchair, it's actually, I think, a, a reasonably compelling piece of, of Second Life content. It looks reasonably like um, a wheelchair. Um, it's actually designed, believe it or not, uh, not for sitting. <laughs> There's another way that you can glue it to your pelvis that creates more uh, realistic motion. But what I wanted to illustrate with this is that just like I was making those um, ugly plywood boxes before, this entire object is made up of more or less the same Lego bricks. Um, it's made up of cylinders, it's made up of cubes, um, it's, those objects have had um, images created in a program like Photoshop, um, so flat, flat images that are then uh, used as what are called textures um, and applied to the surfaces of these objects in order to create something that looks like, um, in this case, uh, a fairly convincing wheelchair. Um, and again, the nice thing about Second Life's approach to this is that everything I'm doing here is with 
taking this apart um, is with tools that are built into the environment itself and are available to, to all users. You don't have to go out and buy some extra piece of software or some extra device in order to construct things in Second Life. Um, all it requires is uh, copious free time. So you can see how the um, this system, while not necessarily easy to work with, um, is incredibly flexible. Um, pretty much anything you can imagine um, has already been built, um, and if it hasn't been, then then you or someone you work with can probably construct it as well. I've seen everything in Second Life from uh, skydiving kits where you can fly in the air in an airplane and dive out and trail smoke off your ankles and make interesting patterns to um, uh, what else have I seen? Nightclubs with, you know, flashing laser effects and and live DJs in the evenings. Um, pretty much anything you can imagine you can build in this environment. So the cost is it has a fairly high learning curve. There are obnoxious people in the welcome area. Um, it's hard to navigate. Things don't look as good as, you know, things you might find on your your game console. But the flip side of that is that there's this giant ecosystem of, of content, things that you would never find um, in a game or a more game-like environment, um, and that you can bend the environment to your will. You can use it for more practical things. Questions? Um, in the MRI machine, do they have the uh, sound effects of what the MRI sounds like? Because I know that's a, a big issue with some patients. Uh, this particular one does not. Um, yeah, and I, I think that would be that would be very helpful as well. It's it's been a while since I've been in a scanner, but I remember them as being very claustrophobic and made weird, odd clicking and banging noises that were somewhat intimidating. Um, just like you can um, use images out of, of Photoshop, Second Life also allows you to upload audio clips. Um, so if you, that's an interesting issue. You wouldn't want to stick a stick a metal microphone into an MRI machine, but if you had some way to record the audio, uh, you could get it into into Second Life. And the scripts to play sounds are are really pretty easy. It's like LL play sound. There's like one line in the script language that'll play a play a noise. James, I'd just like to bring uh, Gromit in again, just because you've done a lot of, spent quite a lot of time taking people around Second Life uh, and working with them in that environment, uh, Marty. I mean, sure. the general reaction people have when you take them to various different sites and, um, you know, particularly any, any comments that you've got or they've got about educational, um, uh, I guess, capabilities of this environment? Well, they can be quite impressive. Um, there's one site that's useful for, that's used for teaching chemistry, where you can, like, fly in and, and around the uh, inside and around the wire diagrams. Um, I I'm, apologize for the static here. I'm trying to keep my volume down but it seems to be flaring every so often um, and it's also an interesting environment to interact with students because it's a different kind of interaction it's as you probably are experiencing now this is a very different interpersonal experience than if we were all uh, sitting together in a classroom or sitting together in a conference room or something like that and um, in some instances it can be a more freeing environment because people can create people can revise uh, there's almost no quote-unquote finished product if you will here because it's so easy to revise things and one of the other things that's interesting is that you can engage in multiple conversations simultaneously uh, which you couldn't do if we were sitting around uh, in a classroom for example like it would be regarded as extremely rude if um, James started 
talking uh, and saying, ah, the old text chat back channel out loud while I was talking, but it's completely fine for him to be typing that and for other people to seeing, be seeing it. You can also have private chat where you can talk to someone um, directly uh, without other people um, listening in, if you will, or seeing what you're typing. And um, so it allows for a lot more interaction